AdamandBeliever.com forward slash the creator to look at somebody say the sent ones. Did the, did, did the document come up? Oh, yeah. Okay. Amen. God is above everything. Look at somebody say he's above everything. If he's above everything, that means there's nothing that he's not above of. And that means that there's nothing above him. Look at somebody and say, God is above everything. I want y'all to understand who you serve, okay? Especially in times like these. There's no, just like the song we were singing, PJ song, I won't be afraid. Why would you be afraid if you serve the God that's above everything? Amen. If he's above everything, that means he has a plan for everything. And who ignores his plan? Psalms 139. Oh, no, no. He is not everywhere, but everywhere is in him. Yeah. So to, to say that he, he's everywhere, what means he has to go somewhere to be everywhere. <laughs> God don't have to go nowhere because everywhere is where? In him. Psalms 139 and 6. Such knowledge is too wonderful for me. It is high. I cannot what? It's so wonderful, I can't understand it, is what the scripture is saying. The knowledge is so high, I can't attain it. To give God eyesight makes him incapable of seeing everything at the same time. So quit picturing God with eyesight. Because eyesight would mean he would have to look and see. See, here's the problem. We take our humanness and try to create God. But our humanness is limited to our humanness. All we know is linear time and humans. So when it comes to God... We can't even understand the depths of him with our understanding because our understanding is limited to our understanding. We only understand what we can understand. So to give him eyesight makes him incapable of seeing everything at the same time. His perception of mankind is not mankind's perception of things. Yeah, because you can't see everything and you can't even imagine or fathom how a being could see everything. You can't even, your mind won't let you perceive how you can be praying and somebody in Africa can be praying and God can hear you both and be in fellowship and communion with you both. Your mind can't go there let alone millions. Amen. This ain't Bruce Almighty. God don't have a giant file cabinet with everybody's business in it. <laughs> our perception, we, we just got to quit trying to use our sorry brains. 1 Samuel 16 and 7. But the Lord said unto Samuel, look not on his countenance, when he was trying to choose the king of, of Israel and he was looking at the, you know, Samuel was looking at the tall, strong dudes. He said, look not on his countenance or on the height of his stature because I have refused him. Height means nothing to me. For the Lord seeth what? Not as a man seeth. For man looketh on the outward appearance, but the Lord does what? Look at the heart. Isn't it crazy how we get dressed up and, and we're evil? And God is not even looking at that St. John's outfit. People still wear those. And them red bottoms. They wear those, I know. <laughs> Somebody like, what's those? You don't want to know. The red bottom. God don't look at that. He's not looking at it because them same folks that can be dressed up with a tailored custom suit can be full of the devil. 
Amen. And we smell the Aramis cologne and think there is anointing on them. Brother, that's cologne. But God looketh at the heart. And our minds can't even perceive how God can look at the heart. How does our heart speak to God? It's a language that we don't understand. When they measure your heart, when the doctor measures your heart, the doctor measures your heart with frequencies. Frequencies, and you know, we, we don't really understand. But God can look at those frequencies and get a language from those frequencies. Can I keep going? Look at somebody and say, God is not a man with a beard. Lord, that's Zeus. The white man with a beard, that's Zeus. And the black man is Shango. He always a white man, you know, because we're here in America. So we always, ah, oh, they always, like, no, you, you, you ain't travel. Because they ain't always a white man. Sometimes it's Shango. <laughs> and he looked just as silly trying to be God with human arms and legs and a chest. How you God with a chest? <laughs> it's foolishness. When we give God our physical attributes, we do what? We limit him to ourselves. We begin to consider him incapable of doing things that we are incapable of doing and explaining. That makes us start doing things our way. Because we can't understand how it can happen. We don't believe it can happen. Throw the end of the world and Bill Gates about to make us all take the vaccine. What are we going to do? But with your mind, it looks hopeless. Because that's your mind. That's the same mind that couldn't, fit, that couldn't get the rent up. The same mind that couldn't decide what we, it was going to eat that night. You're going to use that mind to try to figure out Bill Gates and his buddies? Your mind has told you that it is incapable. Your mind told you to marry that witch you married. <laughs> and date that dude you dated. That's your mind told you that. Bet on that horse that time. <laughs> your mind. <laughs> told you that it's okay to go to the cliff club ain't nobody gonna shoot this weekend your mind told you that 10 people got shot you was one of them your mind listening to your mind your mind yeah so we start considering God incapable of things can you imagine that? Walking around thinking God is incapable of something just because it seems preposterous to us. I did that whole truth behind him, all that information. I got all that information, and the whole time I was doing it, I was like, this means nothing to God. He can just, he can end this world and just create a whole nother one, which is what he's going to do anyway. He said it. A new heaven and a new earth. I'm just going to end that one. And we're going to do something else. Because he, look at somebody say, because he's God. And then look at that same person and say, what are you worried about? All the food going to be gone. Boy, God will get a buzzard. A buzzard. Look at somebody. I ain't eating no buzzard bringing me meat. I will. Get out of the way and let him flap to my house. If I'm hungry enough, I'm going to eat whatever he's carrying. 
Shoot, especially if he's sent by God. He's a good buzzard. <laughs> Shoot, Elijah did not have a problem with that meat coming. He didn't ask, Lord, what, from whence did this meat get torn? He didn't ask. <laughs> he ate that meat, Jack. And you get hungry enough, buzz it, whatever it is flying. It could be a chicken. Just bring it. Because I'm going to eat what he got, and then I'm going to kill him and eat him. God gave me two meals in one. So what are you worried about? What are you worried about? Is God going to forsake us? Has he ever forsaken his people? Talking about a God with a perfect track record. That's what makes me question Adam and Eve. They must have been crazy. Because you listen to a serpent that was made by the creator. And the serpent told you what the creator won't do and will do. I'd have been like, wait a minute, let's go ask him. Let's go ask the creator. You listen to a serpent with no track record of doing anything right. Ephesians 3 and 20. Oh, well, let me say. We begin to consider him incapable of things that we are incapable of doing and explaining. Ephesians 3 and 20. Now unto him that is able to do what? exceeding abundantly above what all we, he can do what you can't even think to ask him to do yeah that's how far above you it is you don't even know the right questions to ask our faith is hindered when we see God as a man amen you've been watching too many movies Amen. God is not Morgan Freeman. Amen. Around the same age. But he's not. No, I'm just kidding. That's a joke. Somebody just. Amen. But uh, <laughs> you can't make God a man. God is ageless and uncreated. So he can't be a man. Amen. When we look for him to do things that a man would do, we cause our belief to fade and we start doubting the reality of who he really is. When we start looking for God to act like a man, our belief begins to fade. This is the main reason the devil is emasculating men right now, taking them straight out of the home, take the example out of the home so people won't understand how a man operates. They can't relate to God without understanding authority in the home. You just, amen. You need somebody to tell you what to do and under no circumstances can you not do it. You either obey or get out. Because that's salvation. It's an example of salvation. You either obey or you go to hell. Uh, can't get no hand claps well they changed that you know they found out later that hell is really not eternal you just burn up and then you're gone I don't want to do that either <laughs> look at somebody say I want to be with Jesus burn up and then I'm gone boy Isaiah 55 and 9, for as the heavens are higher than the earth, so are my ways higher than your ways, and my thoughts, what? Than your th God's thoughts are higher than your thoughts. His ways are higher than your ways, as the heaven is higher than the earth. Y'all know the, the earth is just a tiny, anyway, y'all know, a fragment compared to the vastness of the universe. Amen? The vastness of this universe. And there are other universes. 
yeah, it gets pretty big out there. Yeah. And God is so smart because all that's out there still answers to him. The vastness of it. All that's out there still answers to him. Imagine that. And then he made us dominion over the same amount going the other way to the atomic level. So as vast as it is outward, it's just as vast inward. Oh, I just messed somebody up there. Yeah. In the atomic level, as you go out, you can go in the same distance. I'll leave that alone. Your mind, somebody's head is hurting. Yeah. <laughs> this can come from seeing the failures of God's chosen authority. So when you grow up and see people make errors and make mistakes and different things like that, then you can start thinking that there's something wrong with God's choices. I'm preaching now. Yes, yes. Grow up to your father, make mistakes, you may not like it. He may have abandoned your family, he may have done you wrong, you feel like he may have whatever, whatever, whatever. Well, you still got to go and forgive him and make that right because it's right to make that right. Because we're all guilty of something. And what your measurement of how bad that something really is doesn't count because you're not just. So you're going to measure it with your emotions that's why you're not the judge. Amen. Amen. So, yeah. So you, you can't look at man and man lets you down and now you think something is wrong with God or Christianity. Because God is going to always use men. Yeah. He's going to always use me. Well, like I was saying the other day, I, I mean, Saturday, I was talking to all these different men, and some of them, you know, things have happened, and, you know, with them, some of them went through divorces, and some of them remarried, and different things like that, and, you know, people just judged them for that, and threw them away, and, oh, well, if you go through that, you're not capable of it. I can't judge that. I just know what they did for me. And I got to forgive and let God judge that. Does it look good? No. I didn't say it did. Look at everybody just looking at it. Yeah, I'm, I'm serious. I can't say that they weren't chosen by God. <laughs> However, when we disrespect godly authority, we disrespect God and become insubordinate to God's ordained anointed one. Can I keep preaching in here? Psalms 105 and 15 saying, Touch not mine anointed and do my prophet. What? There is no way we can keep a true respect for the creator of all if we do not obey the voice of those that he speaks through. Yeah, I know this message ain't going to settle well with some folks. But listen, you're not going to keep a true respect for the creator disrespecting who he's trying to speak to. Yeah, if you dishonor your very father who gave you life on this earth, you can't turn around and go to the heavenly father. You can't bypass him and get to God. There are things God gave him that you'll never get anywhere else. And he's going to make sure you get it from him. Amen. Amen. He speaks through his word and the voice of those that he has chosen. Y'all believe that? I, I hope you do if you're sitting in here. Why do people go to church? You're trying to make a, meet a quota for God? Well, Lord, I was in church every Sunday. Yeah, but you, you didn't listen to what was being preached. You didn't even believe it. Romans 10 and 15. And how shall they preach except they be sent. Y'all know some folks preaching and they're not sent. 
Mm. That's the problem. Now, I'm sent, and y'all believe it because you're here. And those that God sends, he pulls them back for many years, like a slingshot, pulling that rubber band back, just pulling it back, years and years. Why is he pulling it back? Because the further you pull it back, what happens when you let it go? The farther it'll go. So it becomes... Ain't, can't no man stop that trajectory because God's preparation was intense and it was for many years and he pulled it back and when he decided to let it go look at somebody and say you can't stop it you can't stop it so how shall they preach except they be sent and you better know when you sent. Ain't nothing wrong with knowing you sent. Have somebody tell me that, brother. You walking around calling yourself the chosen one. Somebody told me that. I said, chosen? Well, many are called, but few are what? Chosen. I, I'm, I am chosen. Oh, but you said the chosen one. The chosen one? Like what? Like Emmanuel? I mean, what are you talking about? Bro, I've just chosen to do the truth behind hip hop. Had anybody done it before me? No. Has anybody else done it? No. Why? How shall they preach except they be sent? That is, because it's written. How beautiful are the feet of them that do what? Preach the gospel of what? Peace and bring what? The respect level we have for God and his chosen men will dictate our progress. <laughs> Dictate our progress in this life. Yes, yes, this is what God led me. Saturday, he just began to show me. So these men, you treated them good. You gave them what they wanted, even when they didn't deserve it. And I walk right in their office and call them bishop. If that's what you want to be called, brother, I'll call you. Now, you old. you 20 years older than me, so I know you know something I don't know. So I'm going to sit here and figure out what you know that I don't know that can help me. But I'm going to honor you in your place where you are. But the respect level we have for God and his chosen men is, is going to dictate. That's why I tell you all the time, and don't come, don't come here if you hate your father. Because all you're going to do is end up hating who? You're a bad family member, you're going to be a bad what? And you're going to call this a cult because I told you to go get it right with your family. Something then is going to be wrong with me. Your husband wants to reconcile. I talked to you, tried to get you to go reconcile with him, but you wanted to date and find a hero in here. So I sent you on to him to try to work it out. And now you're lying. Yeah. 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 Amen. Oh, I will preach in here. There's a whole lot go on that y'all don't know about. And I don't have to talk about it. I just let God deal with it because he sees all and knows all because everything is in him. Amen. And I don't have time. I don't have time to deal with foolishness. You got the warning and you ignored it. And that can't be my fault. Hebrews 13 and 7. Obey them that have rule over you. Somebody want to leave right now. You can't. We keep the lights dim. You can bounce. But in here, you got to obey those that have rule over you and submit yourselves. So don't come to me as the pastor, ask me for advice, and then when it fails, you mad at me. It fails because you didn't do it, and then you mad at me. You asked me. I told you. It wasn't what you wanted to hear. And you did what you was going to do anyway. So why did you waste my time? And why were you coming here anyway? Because that was in your heart all along anyway. Ain't nobody just decide, no, man, I done got offended. Brother, something was wrong with you when you joined. 
Obey them that have rule over you and do what? Submit yourself. Why is God saying this? Because as great and powerful as God is, when he brought Jesus here, he took Jesus back, he left the Holy Ghost, and it operates through the five-fold ministry that he's called. And it is for the betterment of the body of Christ. But when people stop respecting that, then now we have a problem. The church will implode and Antifa going to get it. That's why folk don't want to go back to church. I hope COVID lasts forever so I don't have to go back. I send my money in and I'm good. And preachers don't want to go back. I'm sick of them folk. They crazy. They don't listen to nothing. They don't obey nothing. That's because somewhere along the line, folks forgot that God was speaking. You forgot that God was speaking through men. You forgot that. For they watch for your souls. That's my job to watch for your soul. Oh, some souls I don't want to watch. Raggedy soul. Oh. Woo! Take your soul and get on. But I got to watch for your soul. Because I got to give an account. So I want to make sure my heavenly ledger is clean. Amen. So I smile in your old face and act like I like you just so I have some good marks. It's hard, it's hard to like somebody you know going to betray you. The word of the Lord has come to you and told you. Just like Jesus. Jesus had to like Judas anyway. Treat him like the rest. And I got to do it. Watch for your soul. Because I got to give an account. That they may do it with joy and not with grief. But this part right here. Woo, this last part. For that is what? Unprofitable for you. So, if you are insubordinate and always going, your life, ooh, you're not going to profit much. You're going to be an unprofiting person because of your insubordination. You can't get down and pray and skip over the insubordination. God's not going like, to let you do it. You got to make it all right if you want your stuff to be right. Can I keep going? If we expect to receive from God, we must act like he is supreme and trust his choices at what? Not our own. <laughs> so if you're choosing who God is speaking through, then you're supreme. <laughs> yeah, you got to respect that he's the one that's supreme and you got to trust his choices. John 3 and 20. For if our heart condemn us, God is greater than our hearts. And what? He knoweth how many things? How much is all? He knows all things. I love this picture. This is the, one of the deepest pictures you'll ever see. It's deep. See, you just see it as start and finish. You don't know how deep that is. That's God. Start and finish. Alpha and Omega. Beginning and the end. That means there's nothing outside of that. When you start and finish, everything has happened. Who he chooses is not our, look at somebody say, that's not your business. Oh my goodness, who he chooses is not your business. Even as a daughter and a son, you don't sit up and wonder why you got the father you got. Because who God chose to be your father is not your business. You'll just be glad that you got here. None of us get to pick. Because if we pick, we'll mess it up. Because what we think we need and think we want, we won't get. He knows what we do not know. And he is just and we are not. Because he can see the end with the beginning, he can choose those that will endure and succeed. So God's not picking quitters. Did you know God don't pick quitters? Yeah. 
You quit every job you've ever had. God ain't using you. You're a quitter. He can choose those that's going to make it all the way. Romans 11 and 33. Oh, the depth of the riches, both of the wisdom and knowledge of God. How unsearchable are his judgments. Unsearchable. Are your judgments unsearchable? No, I can find all your judgments. But God's, man, why he picks who he picks, he knows. And his ways past finding out. They're above your ability to understand them. Though we may stumble and fall at times, our goal must be to never stop preaching his truth as a preacher, assembling with the fellowship he called us to if we are a pastor, and crying aloud, sparing not if we are a prophet. Look at somebody say, you got to keep going. You can't stop. God's call don't stop. You can't stop sent. Galatians 6 and 9. And let us not grow weary in do, uh, weary of doing good. For in when due season we will reap, but only if we what? Don't you pick the end times to start quitting, second guessing. Don't you pick strong delusion time to throw in the towel. Because if you hold on in due season, the Bible says you're going to reap. But only if you do not what? Give up. Summary! God is his word and his word is God. There is no way. Look at somebody and say no way. No way to separate him from his word. So if I'm preaching his word, I'm preaching God. No way to separate it. The authority of who he is lies in his preach word. When it's the gospel that is preached. The anointing to preach the word is really God's permission to speak for him. That's the anointing. Jesus said he was anointed to preach the gospel. Meaning that God had given him what to preach at that moment. It's permission. Anointed. Everybody's not anointed to preach the gospel. I knew men back in the day could get up and tell a boring story and mention God in it and then have an altar call and the whole church would go up to the altar. The anointing was on it. It was boring. Sometimes I was like, man, what is he talking about? And as soon as he opens up the altar, they all flood because the anointing was there to call people to repentance. This must be acknowledged, listen y'all, and respected by all because God's words are who he is. You can't take for granted coming in here on Sundays and hearing the gospel being preached. Amen. You can't take it for granted. Because if you do, the day you start doing that, the devil's going to take it from you. It has to be acknowledged. And respected by all because God's words are who he is. Many desire to preach, but they are not anointed to, and they just should not. You always know those that are not anointed because the body of Christ suffers under their leadership. They do not prosper and cause more issues than they help. They preach for selfish gain and internet views. They cause division and discord. They only draw the scorn and the simple. They are imposters and not truly chosen. They are echoes and not real voices. The truth of God's word is sacred and only given. If God is who he is, last week we talked about if he's creator of all things, nothing above him, everything is in him. Creator, I mean just the master of the universe. If God is who he is, then his word is who he is, and his word is just as sacred as who he is. And only given to preach to those that will not use it for selfish gain. If it's sacred, then it's not going to be used for selfish gain. Those that can truly deny themselves and their worldly passions will receive God's anointing to preach it. 
God will not use a person that is trying to use him. Amen. God is not going to use a word. Woo, see, y'all, I mean, ooh, see, ABC a look different. It's a little different because you got a pastor that, that come preach to y'all without getting paid. So you can't ever say I'm doing it for the money. If you can't deny yourself in worldly passions, you're not going to get the anointing to preach. God will not use a person that is trying to use him. He will not anoint a vagabond that cannot sit under authority, receive instructions, and follow through. Can't sit under authority. You can't sit under nobody. Everybody you sat under, you got from under. You can't receive instruction. Every church you went to, you, you quit or got kicked out. You can't follow through. God told me to start this, and it failed. Well, then now God wants me to start this. Failed. Now God is ready for me to move forward and start this. Fail. Dude, you got straight F's and keep making up stuff. You have no follow through. You insult God because it's almost like if God knew you was like that, why would he ever call you? He know you a quitter. He know you ain't going to finish. Why would he call you? Men that quit are not qualified. The eternal creator of all things requires those that will forsake all to do things his way. So men that will quit are not qualified. Total surrender is the expectation. See, people have had to change the gospel to match the quality of man that's out there now. So now quitting is okay because we got a world full of quitters. The eternal creator of all things requires those that will forsake all to do things his way. Total surrender is the expectation, and there are no negotiations allowed. Who we are, I mean, who are we to bend, fold, and edit God's truth to suit ourselves if he's great, powerful? Who are we to change it? We are nothing and should all be totally reliant on God's way. Amen. Amen. Therefore, those he chooses are our instructors. God chooses our instructors. And his word is our what? Life. 2 Timothy 4 and 2. <laughs> the Bible said, preach the word, be instant when? In season and out of season. No matter how they feel about it, you be instant, in season and out of season. Reprove, rebuke. Exhort with all long suffering and doctrine. For the time will come when they what? But after their own lust, shall they do what? Heap upon themselves teachers having itching ears. And they shall turn away their ears from the truth. And shall be what? Turned unto fables. But watch thou in all things. Endure them Messing with you, fighting against you. You got to endure that. You can't, look at somebody say, you can't quit. So you endure afflictions. Do the work of an evangelist and do what? Make full, what's the proof? You didn't quit. Make full proof of thy ministry. Everyone stand to your feet. In this last hour, we got to keep a healthy respect for God's word. Amen. And we respect the man of God that's preaching his word. I like to have fun. Y'all know that. I'm a joke cracker and a high sider. I love having fun. Talk about, I will get down with you. When I'm preaching this word, you're going to respect this word. And you better know it's for you. And if it's not for you, you better move on. That's it. Because I know what it costs me to do this. I know what it costs my family for me to do this. I take this seriously. So you got to, in this hour right now, you got to respect this word. Because once you stop respecting it, you stop respecting God's ability to even speak to you. Everyone bow your heads. Father God, we just thank you, Lord, for this word. Thank you for your truth. Thank you, God, for just... 
who you chose and even making me realize God and I had to repent for some of the men that were in my lives that you used to help me and I didn't think I needed to deal with them anymore because of some things that they got into and then on Saturday just a realization of who you've called who you've chosen and how I have to look past my humanness and not see men as you and the things they help me with, how I have to treasure those things and respect them and let you judge the rest. And I thank you, Lord, for that, just that realization. And I thank you for the realization of all that are in here so we'll understand and get a good understanding of you being creator of all, a supreme being, and you being able to choose who you want to choose. And you knowing why you chose who you chose without us knowing. Father God, we just thank you. We look at the Bible and we see the beginning and the end and we can read the stories of all of these men and the ones that did great things for you, but they may have made errors and different things. We get to see the whole picture, but if we were living in that time, all we would have to do is just trust that that's a man that you sent. And so help us to do that today, God. Help us to not bicker and be little. Help us, Father God, to not get in your way of who you've chosen. And most importantly, help us to trust what lines up with the word. That your word, as we read it and as we hear it, will continue to build our faith in this last hour. So we won't be afraid of what the devil is doing. And we can have confidence that we'll make it. And we will win in the end. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.